What's going on guys, John Alderher from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna create a PDF list of venues for our app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna automatically generate a PDF file with our list of venues. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code UG1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last couple of videos, we've been generating text files and CSV spreadsheet files for our list of venues. In this video, I wanna show you how to create a PDF file with a list of all your venues or a PDF file with anything you want for that matter. So we can come over here, we can click this, we can open it in Firefox, we can save it, we can open it in Acrobat, whatever you want, click OK. When you do, we see up here, it's a PDF file. We can, you know, zoom in, zoom out, do all the PDF type things. And it's got a list of all of our venues. Now this will automatically update as we add more venues. This will add it to that PDF file automatically so that your people can download a list of the venues in a PDF format or, you know, any kind of PDF file that you want really easily. So head back over to our code here. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django Wednesday videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's head over to our views.py file and let's, uh, you know, generate a PDF file venue list. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use something called Report Lab. And that does not come with Python or Django. We have to actually pip install that. So let's head back over to our terminal here. And I'm in the same directory we've been working at throughout this course. Our virtual environment is turned on. That's important. So we just go pip install report lab, all one word. And this will go out and grab it and install. It also installs pillow, which is a, an image thing. Uh, we've used pillow for lots of things in the past, especially for Kinter. So now we can pip freeze just to make sure and sure enough report lab. There it is. If this version has changed by the time you watch this video, no big deal. Just whatever the latest version is should be OK. So let's go Python manage.py run server just to make sure our, our server's running. OK, head back over to our views.py file. Now we need to import a whole bunch of stuff for this. So I'm going to put this on a separate line here. And so let's go from django.http. We want to import file response. And we've already got an HTTP thing up here. So we could have just you went, you know, file response like that. But I want to put this on a separate line just because we're going to be importing a bunch of things for this. And I want them all to be grouped together just so it's easier to see them and understand what we're doing. So we also need to import IO, stands for input output, right? And now we want to go from report lab dot PDF gen PDF generator. We want to import a canvas. So we're not creating a PDF file. We're creating a canvas and we're putting the stuff in the canvas and then we're going to save that as a PDF file. So we need to import that. So we also need from report lab dot lib dot units. We want to import inch. So, okay. And we also want to go from report lab dot lib dot page sizes, we want to import letter. Now I'm not going to get into report lab in great detail in this video because it is a gigantic library. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. I could do an entire five hour course on it. Obviously, we're not going to get into it. So I'm not going to go into all this stuff in great detail. This is just the stuff we need, right? So, okay, let's come down here. And first, let's head over to our urls.py file and let's just create a quick URL for this. So I'm going to copy this one. And this is going to be underscore PDF. We want to point it to views dot new underscore PDF. And we want the name to be new underscore PDF. So okay, that looks good. Save that. Now let's head over to our templates, events and our nav bar. And just very quickly, let's add another link to the nav bar. So uh, here's our CSV stuff. So let me just copy all of this from the last video, paste it in. And this is going to be venue PDF file. And it's going to point to venue underscore PDF. So, okay. So we need to create this venue underscore PDF we keep referencing. So save this. We can close this. And right here, let's just define a new function, revenue underscore PDF. And as always, we want to pass in request like we do. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is create a byte stream buffer. 
And again, we're not gonna get into great detail what all this stuff is. I'm just gonna kind of do it and you can just sort of copy and paste it for now. Like I said, I'll show you where the report lag website is. There's a really nice guide you can look at if you wanna learn more about this. But for now, we're just gonna kind of fly through this. So, so let's create a buffer. I'm gonna call it io.bytes, io, right? B-Y-T-E-S, io. Now we wanna create a canvas. And to do that, I'm just gonna name it C, short for canvas, right? And this is gonna be a canvas.canvas. And we wanna pass in that buffer and also the page size. And we wanna set that to letter. So remember up here we imported letter and that's just, you know, letter size, regular paper, right? Think of it like that, okay? And then finally, we also want to go bottom up and set that equal to zero. So, okay. There's our canvas. So now we want to create a text object, right? This is sort of gonna tell us what to put in on the canvas. So let's go text ob, short for text object, whatever. And this is just gonna be c.begin text. And then we wanna go text ob dot set text origin. And we wanna pass in inch by inch. And this is just a measurement, right? And then we need to set the font. So let's go text object dot set font and do whatever. Let's go Helvetica. I always like to use Helvetica. Let's just put this as size 14, make it nice and big. So, okay, now we're, we're ready to go. Let's uh, add some lines of text. And this is gonna be just like we did with the text thing down here, right? Remember when we did this thing? Sort of the same thing. Let's come up here and let's create a Python list, right? And inside of here, we could just say this is line one, separate each of these by comma, and let's say line two and line three. And for now, let's just make a PDF file of just this, just so we can see how to put stuff in there and how to make it actually work. So now let's loop and let's go for line in lines. What do we wanna do? We wanna go text ob, remember our text object, dot text line, and then we wanna pass in that line. So our text object is just this thing right here. We're just passing in each line of these things into it, right? And then let's finish up. We wanna go C dot draw text. What do we wanna draw? We wanna draw that text object. We wanna go C dot show page. That's a function too. We wanna go c.save, we wanna save it. And then we wanna set the buffer to seek zero. Okay, so we're good to go there. Finally, let's uh, return something. You know, we always return stuff. Like down here, we return response. Well, now we want to return file response, right? And that's this thing up here that we imported, right? File response, it's an HTTP thing. And we wanna return the buffer. We wanna set the as attachment to equal true. And we wanna give this a file name. So let's go file name equals, and let's just call this venue.pdf. Obviously it's not venues right now, but it will be in a second. So, okay, we went through that very quickly. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our website. And let's see, let's go to our venues. Here's a list of our venues, one, two, three, four, five. We're not passing them in here now, but we can click on this. And it says, what do you wanna do? Open it, open it with Firefox, open it with Adobe Acrobat or save it. Let's just open it in Firefox. We do that, we see this is line one, two, and three, and it's done. It's done its thing. So we can, you know, zoom in. We can see that this is, created as venue-11.pdf. It's listed as dash 11 because I've hit this thing 11 times while I was playing with it. If we click it again and open it, it's gonna be dash 12, right? If you save this, you could save it to anything you want. So if we wanted to save as, uh, we could then you know name it anything we want, save it to our desktop, and that would be cool. So, okay, that works pretty easy. Now, how do we get the venues themselves into that PDF file instead of that line one, line two, line three stuff? So let's head back over here. And I'm just gonna comment this out. So I'll leave it here so you can see it in the code, but that's not really what we want. Remember in the last video, we grabbed all of our stuff like this. So we could do that again. We can, let's see, designate our model, venue equals venue.objects all. And again, that venue is because we imported venue up here. And that venue is our models.py venue class. 
right? So we can access all of this stuff like we've done in earlier videos. And to do that, it's a little bit different. So again, sort of like we did, actually, let's come down here to the text thing. Remember when we, we did this text thing? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a blank Python list, and then we're just going to append stuff to it, right? So let me just copy this, head back up here, to our venue underscore PDF, and let's come down here after we designate our model. Let's create our blank list, and then let's loop through here. So let's go for venue in venues. What do we want to do? We want to go lines dot append, and then we want to put something, right? What do we want to put? Well, we want to put each of these things. So name, address, zip code, phone, web, and email. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six of these things. So I'm just going to copy this. And this is going to be venue dot something. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we also want a seventh one as well. I just want to put a blank space. So again, this is going to be venue dot name. This one will be venue dot address. The next one will be venue.zip code. The next one will be venue.phone. All right. The next one will be venue.web. Oh, we need one more. And then the last one will be venue.email address. Okay. And like I said, we want to blank line. So this will append each of these things into our blank list one line at a time. And then this will loop through that list and one line at a time, put it into the PDF file. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here, hit reload, we did that pretty quick. But now when we click here, we want to open it. Boom, we've got a list of one, two, three, four, five items, one, two, three, four, five venues and just that easy. So very cool. And you can play around with this, you know, we could, uh, I don't know, instead of a blank line, we could, you know, uh, I don't know, something like this. I don't know, whatever you like. Come back here, hit reload, look at this thing again, open it. And uh, whatever you like, right. So I uh, play around with this. And uh, have some fun. Now, like I said, report lab is gigantic. If you head over here to https colon forward slash forward slash report lab dot com docs report lab dash user guide dot pdf. This is a very extensive user guide that shows just all kinds of stuff you would ever want to know about report lab if you really want to dig in there and learn more about it. Or you go to report lab dot com, click on developers. And you can read through this stuff in itself, click on docs here, there's all kinds of different things you can look at read about if you're interested in. Like I said, this would take me hours to describe it all. And we don't really care that much. We're just, you know, whipping up a quick, a quick and easy PDF file. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.